here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Colors and I'm back with another video and today's video is yet another bump date. Now it already feels weird to be saying this so soon already because I literally just posted this <laughs> bump date yesterday but you guys said you wanted to see a bump date so here we go. This video is going to be about my 27 week bump date so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I'm sitting so high you guys like <sighs> sitting so high. Look at that. <laughs> she is getting up there. I don't know if y'all guys can tell. I gotta get on my tippy toes because I don't wanna put my camera down. Look at that, you guys. So anyway, go ahead and jumping right into it. The first symptom I have experienced or thing that I went through through my 27 weeks is that I was extremely emotional. Like, I know I said in my bump date that I was emotional, but no, 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 no. My 27 week was a stress child. <laughs> I actually tried to record the bump date that I posted earlier in the week and I couldn't do it because I couldn't stop myself from crying. No, no, I'm better now, but I was kind of going through the turmoil and still having the anxiety that I was having in my 26 week. And I think I was just getting overall overwhelmed. So everything was just making me cry and upset and frustrated. The next thing that has happened is that I noticed that I started to get dry patches on, on my face, specifically around my chin. Um, I don't know where that is coming from, but I noticed that when after, I, especially after I put on makeup, I would uh, break not break out but the makeup wasn't sitting well in this area like i would wash it and this whole my whole chin would be extremely red and i'm like why is my chin so red and why is my skin peeling right there and i started to try to exfoliate my face and then moisturize it so i haven't noticed it in the last day or two but I was getting like dry patches all in this area, even around my smile line. So yeah, that was one of the other things. The next thing that's happened is that my ribs are starting to kill me. And I think it's from the protrusion that I just showed you guys. I just stood up, but if you notice on the side, there's like a big, I don't know if you could tell in my dress, but there's like this big indent right here. So this is like my rib. I can feel my bone right there. And then it's just like my stomach is poking out and falling forward. And it's really aching me more so at night. So I had the issue on both sides. And I think this whole level of where it's poking out in the front is really starting to uh, bother me. So that is something that has started to get really annoying and I know I'm gonna get bigger so it's like I'm not looking forward to it at all the next thing that has happened <laughs> I don't even have to read I already know the next thing that has happened this week is that I noticed that my boobs sit on my stomach like when did that happen like <laughs> let me stop RP on myself child <laughs> like wait a minute like I do not deserve this like at all. If it wasn't for this bra, my breasts would probably still be sitting on my stomach child. But I think I'm starting to see this like indefinite line like crease thing going on under my boobs and then it's just like boob on stomach. I literally showed David last night. He was like, mm -mm. <laughs> this is too funny. This stuff I go through child. So the next thing that happened is that I went to go see my OB because as you guys may know, if you've seen the video, I didn't have any doctor's appointment the week before. So I did have one this week. For some reason, at the appointment, it made me want to reevaluate the situation when it comes to the birthing center. Now, this appointment wasn't much different from any other appointment. I had my stomach um, measured, which was measuring on time, and he did the cervical check. For some reason, I was very uncomfortable. I I don't know if it's because it's part of my emotions and I've never been uncomfortable about like any of my cervical checks or anything like that but I was very like I don't want this like I don't want this experience at this time so it just made me more curious about the natural birth situation that I was talking to you guys before at this point he told me that everything looks pretty normal everything with that went good but this led me to actually reaching out to the birthing center that I wanted to look into. So I reached out to them 
and ask them a couple of questions like, hey, this is my situation. I am high risk pregnancy. I do uh, take progesterone. I am interested in looking into possibly delivering with you guys, but I know that you guys don't accept generally people who has complications in a sense in the pregnancy. So she pretty much just let me know that I did have a couple of options that I could potentially do because at this birthing center, they only deliver around 37 weeks. So she said that I can see them and set my first appointment around 32 to 33 weeks. But in the meantime, continue to see my OB. And then uh, when I get to 37 weeks, just transfer care. And then we'll be in the birthing center hands or I can kind of do a little bit of both. She just kind of recommended that I stay with the fetal medicine people until they don't want to see me anymore because that's something that they can't handle because they don't deal with high risk pregnancy so they can't do any emergency cases or steroids or cervical checks that's just not what they do so in the end I pretty much told her that if I have an option to stay doing what I'm doing until I am 37 weeks uh, I would prefer to do that so she said cool we can do that um, I just required to take two birthing classes which would have to happen in January just learning about I guess the techniques I don't know but do birthing classes and if I schedule my first appointment around the first week or two of February then that'll be perfect we'll just kind of have this smooth transition that kind of felt really good because I've been feeling really down about myself about how I don't have the birthing plan that I want to have and it, that's the main reason that I have been procrastinating on creating a birthing plan because I really don't want to deliver in the hospital and granted I'm still exactly in the same situation where I'm still high risk I'm still being checked but right now it looks like everything is looking good so that's what happened I told her um, that I will be stopping by to pick up a handbook because that's one of the things that I had to do I had to go pick up a handbook and start basically catching up care on everything and then giving that back to them pretty much at my first appointment so that's pretty much the whole thing when it comes to natural birth and the OB's office. The next thing that has happened is that I went to go see fetal medicine and I'm a little shook to be honest um, because I went there, they um, pretty much told me that my cervix was the same, that I didn't dilate or anything like that, but I just had more questions for them because now we're in the range where we're going to see him every two weeks so because i am interested in the whole natural birth situation i wanted to know how often would i be seeing him and he let me know that he only foresee me having one to two more appointments tops so basically seeing him up to 33 weeks and that'll be it because he said after that point there is nothing else he could do because it's inevitable that my service will start to shorten that was kind of like relieving because as you know i'm trying to go to the birthing center and around the 33 week mark i want to schedule the appointment for 37 weeks to start care so he was like yeah i'll go ahead and give you the fetal fiber nectin test and see if you're gonna go labor in the two weeks and at that point that would kind of help me gauge especially for next time when you come in uh if we even need to make it to the 33 week mark another thing i end up asking him about is what are the chances he thinks that i will make it to 40 weeks exactly he let me know that the likelihood of me making it to 40 weeks is extremely unlikely like uh that is kind of like i knew that i probably had a good chance of delivering early but this man said that i probably will be delivering between 36 and 37 weeks like which puts me at having the baby within the first week or two of february that is a real big reality check because i'm like oh my gosh I didn't think it would be, I, th I thought maybe like a week early to be honest, like a week early, something like that, maybe the dead end of February, but he was like, no, probably like the first two weeks of February. So he said generally people who have short, short or weak cervix can't hold the baby as long 
because you are already in this short stage. Around 32 weeks, your service will already start to shorten automatically. So he said that he will just say or suggest that I should plan around those two weeks that I could have my baby, which is like, <sighs> baby Isaac could be here. Like that's so crazy. Which is also kind of a up and down thing because it's like great if you think that I could possibly last that long and I could possibly still have the natural burden situation. But then it's a little thing in the back of my head that's a little worried and confused if it's worth the hassle if I do. Now this is all speculations but it does have that little thing like is the hassle of trying to do the natural birth situation and rush that, is it worth it? Or is it just better a smooth transition to just, you know, go ahead and go to the hospital. Now, if I do the natural birth situation, you know, there's going to be a deductible that I have at my first appointment, which is supposed to be the first week or two of February, by the way, which is not a lot of money, but it's still unexpected money up front. And then I got to pay an extra $175 for the pool and an extra 100 dollars i think if i want not just outside and i have to pay all that before february and there's a lot of money coming out right now <laughs> trying to prepare for the baby shower because i'm planning my own baby shower so the money that's coming out of the house for that on top of basically 500 dollars i'm gonna just say for going to the natural birth situation it's kind of discouraging to have that delivery that i want just all this extra expenses of trying to prepare for the baby on top of that and then i wanted to do a maternity shoot you know all these things that i wanted to do before baby gets here and now it's like i don't know if it's worth it because at least if i go to the hospital i can pay later so i don't know I'm a little bit confused now knowing that, but he also did give me some more information as far as preparing for the next baby. He said one of the things that probably happen is that I'll be automatically put on progesterone and they'll be looking more deeply into getting the saclage potentially for my next baby. So, um, which was just interesting information just to know. So he said for sure I will be seeing him for my next child. So yeah that's that the next thing that has happened this week is that they end up watching the gabrielle union segment with her husband about their whole pregnancy journey and that was very interesting i thought it was really sweet that they decided to watch that whole thing with me that whole segment was like an hour long and he literally watched the whole thing with me, which I was really surprised by because I didn't think he would be that interested in the situation. Like I know that we can relate in the sense of having infertility issues, but you know, it just let me know that he was in tune and he was kind of like making moments where he would pause and we'll like discuss about whatever it is that they're talking about. But he was like doing research and stuff like that. And I thought that was really cute. But right after that, it was this video about um, Judge Hatchet. I don't know if y'all know who Judge Hatchet is, but um, she had a segment immediately after that came off about how her daughter-in-law ended up dying from having a C-section from losing too much blood. The story is crazy and I would highly advise you guys to watch it. I'll link the video down below. So basically what happened was that she was... Um, she had the c-section she had the baby the baby was really healthy and everything like that uh she was doing good but then the whole husband noticed that she was leaking blood out her catheter so he would continue to notify the nurses like hey i think something's wrong she keeps telling me that she doesn't feel well and they were just like yeah you know we'll go ahead and order a ct scan so he would go in every like hour to be like hey i haven't got this ct scan she's starting to look very pale something's wrong i know something's wrong where's the ct scan and pretty much they kept pushing it off and then even at one point they said that your wife isn't that important right now we got other things going on so it took them over 10 hours to handle her wife and they got her back into surgery so they said about time that they brought her into the surgery room she only had like three liters of blood in her body and she was already dead like 
how tragic to me and i told my husband this after we was watching this i was like this is why i need not just only for us as women to have knowledge and have awareness of what's going on especially when it comes to labor and delivery and stuff um but we need the husbands to have as much knowledge too because they're the one that's going to help advocate that something's wrong or whatnot and i put up statistics randomly but even in this video if you do go watch it um this guy talks about how that in 2018 the united states had the highest mortality death rate than all over the world and florida is actually higher than united states so that's what's really crazy about me being in florida so and even black women is even higher than all of those so uh it's just really discouraging but encouraging at the same time to to really gain knowledge about some of the things that are necessary some of the things that are not necessary and which one of the reasons why we really want to start fighting for the birther center but sometimes you don't know if the grass is greener on the other side so it's just kind of like a lot going on but if you are interested in that uh i'll try my best to link everything down below but that video is a heavy one and they can explain it way better than i can about the statistics and uh judge hatchett's uh daughter-in-law story and i think it's very touching so that was pretty much everything that happened this week oh i did forget to show you what my um ultrasound look like and i don't really get good ultrasounds anymore because baby is always like facing my spine for some reason but i can show you her arm if you can try to see that but this is her arm right here in her chunky leg child you see that leg that's a thigh piece right there and i also did uh, end up picking up the handbook at the birthing center so i have a lot of stuff in this handbook right here but just looking over this it made me realize how in tune the natural birthing center situation force you to pay attention to yourself so some of the forms they gave me is like asking me like a paper about my birth plan uh some of the questions they ask is what type of labor do i want if i'm going to be filming uh do i want essential oils in the room do i want to touch the baby when crowning do you want to catch the baby or do you want your husband to who will cut the cord do you want to see your placenta do you want to keep it you know these questions are like oh gosh like i get to choose like you're asking me and not me telling you like i love that but yeah um any special question about your birth do i have any anxiety so this is just a birth plan sheet then they have this paper about uh like basically everything how i feel about labor and delivery like one of the questions is about am i scared if i'm scared what am i scared about what am i most excited about what i think about birth what is the first words that come to my mind how do you think i will act doing labor how do i think my partner will act what is my expectations like i i love this whole profile thing because they can just look at this when it's go time some of the things that is in this book is very nutritional based and they even have like little tabs from like look at this in my 20 weeks look at this in my 24th week 28 32 36 weeks like this is a good size book and it is so empowering so i'm definitely going to be working on this but yeah i'm so loving everything that this pamphlet is about and i'm pretty sure they're probably going to be going over this during the classes that i plan to take now even if i don't decide to uh do the hospital i'm probably going to still go to these classes so i think it'll be helpful when it comes to having the birth at the hospital so outside of that let's go ahead and talk about the baby and what it says in my pregnancy plus app this week marks the end of your second trimester babies who are born between 27 and 32 weeks have a chance a good chance of survival 80 to 95 percent of the baby's survival depending on the week of gestation the mother's health and the reason of premature labor and the quality of medical care received your baby is beginning to enter a very active phase which is true in its cramped quarters 
the amniotic fluid, fluid has decreased which means you'll feel every movement of your baby much more than you have before your baby will be practicing the sucking reflex in order to prepare for breastfeeding even though your baby's skeleton is completely developed the joints are not yet connected it's a little weird your baby immune system liver and lungs are still continuing to develop and prepare to function on their own your baby tiny eyelids have begun to open and retinas begin to develop yeah that's pretty much everything that's going on with baby a lot of stuff child baby is just ready to come almost don't come yet child don't come yet but she's almost ready to go so i don't think it's really um makes sense for me to do a whole belly measurement thing because i literally just did that a couple days ago so i think that's going to be all for this particular video so if you haven't already just make sure you have thumbs up this video subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next one bye